singer, I figure you all know, so everybody will try to ask questions about what? Well, I'm supposed to be talking to this microphone. Welcome to the first KQED Poets Conference, press conference. Mr. Dillon is a poet. He will answer questions about everything from atomic science to uh, uh, riddles and rhymes. Go. <laughs> Oh Who's God. first? Come on. I'd like to know about the cover of your of your forthcoming your, your uh, uh, album. <laughs> the uh, one with subterranean music blues in it. I'd like to know about the the meaning of the photograph with you and the wearing a triumph t-shirt. What did you want to know about it? Well, I'd like to know that that's an equivalent photograph. It means something. It's got a philosophy in it. I'd like, to know, I'd, like, I'd like to know visually what it represents to you because you're a part of that. Um, I haven't really looked at it that much. I don't really I've know. thought about it a great deal. I, it was just taken one day when I was sitting on the steps, you know. I, I, don't, uh, I don't really remember any, very too much about it. Well, what about the motorcycle as an image in your in your songwriting? You seem to like that. Oh, we all like motorcycles to some degree. I do. Do you think of yourself primarily as a singer or as a poet? Oh, I think of myself more as a song and dance man, you know. What? <laughs> <laughs> song and dance man. I don't think we have enough time to really go into that. You're quoted in the Chicago Daily News as saying that uh, when you're really wasted, you may enter into another field. How wasted is really wasted, and do you foresee it? No, I don't foresee it, but it's more or less like a ruthless type of feeling. Boom. Very ruthless and uh, intoxicated to some degree. Uh, the criticism that you've received for more or less leaving folk music for folk rock uh, hasn't seemed to bother you very much. Do you think you'll stick with folk rock, or are you going it's, on into more writing? Uh, I don't play folk rock. What I would you call your music? I would call it uh, um, I like to think of it more in terms of vision music. It's uh, mathematical music. <coughs> would you say that the words were more important than the music? Uh, the words are just as important as the music. There would be no music without the words. Which do you do first ordinarily? Uh, the words. You think there will ever be a time when you will paint or sculpt? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. always do your words first and you think of it as music. When you do the words, can you hear it? Can I hear I mean, the can you sort of hear yes. what music you want with yes. when you do your words? Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you hear any music before you have words? Do you have any songs that you don't have words to yet? Um, sometimes on uh, very gentle instruments, not on the guitar, though. Maybe something like the harpsichord or the harmonica or auto harp. I might uh, hear some kind of melody a tune which I would I would know the words to, to put to. You'd say that? Yes, n not, not with the guitar though. The guitar is too hard an instrument. I don't really hear many melodies based on the guitar. Do you sit down just to write a song or do you um, just write it on inspiration? I'm more or less write it on uh, 
a lot of things. <laughs> What poets do you dig? Oh. Um. Rambo, I guess. W.C. Fields. Uh, the the family, uh, you know, the, the trapeze family in the circus. Uh. Smokey Robinson, Allen Ginsberg, Charlie uh, Rich, he's a good poet. In a lot of your songs, you're hard on a lot of people. Like uh, in Like a Rolling Stone, you're pretty hard on the girl. And in Positively Forced, you're pretty hard on the supposed friend. Are you hard on them because you want to torment them or because you want to change their lives and make them know themselves? I want to needle them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still sing your older songs? No. No. I just saw a songbook last night. I don't really see too many of those things, but there's a lot of songs in those books I haven't even recorded. You know? I have just written down, you know, and uh, put little tunes to, and they published them. I haven't sung them, though. I, I, a lot of the songs I just don't even know anymore, even the ones I did sing. There doesn't seem to be enough time, you know. Did you change your program when you went to England? No, no. I finished it there. That was the end of my, my, uh, uh, my older program. I didn't change it. It was developed. And by the time we got there, it was, all, it was more or less, I knew what was going to happen all the time, you know. I knew how many encores there was, you know, how, which songs they were going to clap on the loudest, and all those kind of things. On a concert tour like this, do you do the same program night after night? Oh, well, sometimes it's different. I think we'll do the same one here in this area, though. Did you in England do any of the songs like Subterranean? No, I didn't work with the band there. Will you be working with the band here? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. In a uh, recent broadside interview, uh, Phil Oakes said uh, you should do films. Do you have any plans to do this? No, I don't. Uh, I do have plans to make a film, but not because anybody said I should do them. Yeah. How soon will this be? Next year, probably. Can you tell us what it'll be about? It'll be just another song. You dig Flex, who, is your, who, is, who are the people making films that you dig, particularly? Uh, Tufo. I really can't think of any more people. But Italian movie directors, you know. But not, not too many people in England or the United States, which I can really think that I would dig. You did El Chaplin bit as an exit line in one of your concerts once. I did? <laughs> That's, that must have been an accident. <laughs> I have to stay away from that kind of thing. <coughs> oh, that's pretty. Well, thank you very much. Was that taken right here with the Polaroid? Hmm. Good God, I must leave right away. <laughs> what do you think of people that analyze your songs? Do they usually end up with the same oh, meaning that you I, wrote? Or? I welcome them. <laughs> with open arms. <laughs> the lyrics to all the, all the songs on the, la on the last album and had a symposium discussing them. Do you welcome that? Oh, sure. I'm just kind of sad I'm not around to be a part of it, but it would have been nice. pretty wild if you had been. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, Josh Duff Dunson in his uh, new book, Freedom in the Air, implies that you have sold out to commercial interests 
and the uh, topical song movement. Do you have any comments here? Well, I've no comments, no arguments, no, uh, I certainly don't feel guilty. If you were going to sell out to a commercial interest, which one would you choose? <laughs> Bob? Had, um, ladies' garments. <laughs> Bob, have you worked with any rock and roll groups? Uh, professionally? Or just sitting in or on concert tours with them or sitting no. in with their sessions? No, I don't usually play too much. Do you listen to other people's recordings of your songs? Sometimes. A few of them have heard. I don't really make it a, I don't really come across it that much, though. So. Is it a strange experience? No. It's like, more or less like a heavenly kind of thing. <laughs> what do you think of uh, Joan Baez's interpretations of your earlier songs? Uh, you mean the one she, I haven't heard her latest album, or the one before that. I heard one, uh, she does them all right, I, I think. Colors? What do I think of Donovan Colors? Yeah. Do you think he's a, a, a good poet of love ballads? No. He's a nice guy, though. <laughs> I'm shattered. Huh? I'm shattered. Well, you needn't be. <laughs> Are there any young folk singers or rock groups that you would recommend for us to hear? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's uh, the Sir Douglas Quintet. I think are probably the best uh, in, uh, that are going to have a chance of reaching commercial airwaves. They already have with a couple songs. Uh, what about Paul Butterfield? They're they're good. Mr. Dillon, you call yourself a completely disconnected person. Uh, would you like to? No, I, I didn't call myself that. It's, that's, uh, they should have drove those words in my mouth. I saw that in the paper. Uh -huh. <coughs> How would you describe yourself? What is it that you, you uh, have you analyzed this? Why you appeal to people? I certainly haven't, no. Mr. Dillon, I know you uh, dislike labels and probably rightly so, but uh, for those, those of us who are well over 30, could you uh, label yourself and perhaps uh, tell us what your role is? Well, I sort of label myself as well under 30. <laughs> uh, and my role is to, uh, you know, to just uh, stay here as long as I can. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, that you share Bill Owens' concern that he expressed in recent broadside having to do with the fact that, well, he feels that it becomes increasingly dangerous for you to, you can't hear? No. Phil Oakes wrote something in a recent broadside magazine to the effect that you have that you have twisted so many people's wigs that he feels that it becomes increasingly dangerous for you to perform in public before an audience. Well, that's the way it goes, you know. <laughs> I don't, uh, can't apologize, certainly. Did you envision a time when you would give five concerts in one area like this within 10 days? No. No, this is all very new to me. If, uh, if you were draftable at present, uh, do you have any feelings of what your actions might be? No. I probably, uh, probably just do what had to be done. What would that be? Well, I don't know. I never really speak in terms of what if. You know, so I don't really know. You're considered by many people to be symbolic of the protest movement in the country for the young people. Um, are you going to participate in the Vietnam Day Committee demonstration in front of the Fairmont Hotel tonight? No, I'll be busy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you planning any demonstrations? Well, we thought of one. 
<laughs> I thought of one. I don't know if it could be organized in time. Uh, well, it was a demonstration where I'd make up the cards. You know, they have uh, have a group of protesters here, uh, perhaps carrying cards with pictures of Jack of Diamonds is on them, and Ace of Spades on them, <laughs> pictures of uh, mules, maybe words, and uh, oh, maybe about uh, 25, 30,000 of these things printed up, and just pick it. Here's the signs and pick it. What words? In front of the post office. What? <laughs> Oh, words, uh, camera, <laughs> microphone, <laughs> loose, <laughs> just, just words. Do you consider Names of some famous people, huh? I'm sorry. Oh, do you consider yourself a politician? Do I consider myself a politician? Well, I guess so. I have my own party, though. <laughs> have a name? No, there's no presidents in the party. There's no presidents or vice presidents or secretaries or anything like that, so it makes it kind of hard to get in. Is there any right wing or left wing in that party? <laughs> no, it's more or less in the center. Kind of on the uppity scale. Do <laughs> you think your party's going to end the war with China? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they have any people over there that it would be in the same kind of party, you know. So it might be kind of hard to infiltrate. I don't think my party would ever be approved by the White House or anything like that. Anyone else in your party? Anyone else in this party? No, most of us don't even know each other, you know. It's hard to tell who's in it who's not in it. Do you, you recognize them when you see them? The oh, you can recognize the people when you see them. <laughs> Are there still tickets available for your concert to the I don't know. I would imagine so. Some, I guess. How long do you think before you find your uh, win? Gee, I don't know. I could answer that, you know, but it would mean something different probably for everybody, so. We want to keep away from those kind of things here. What did you mean when you said, I don't think things can work out in the interview recently in the Chicago conference? I don't know. Talking about what things were we talking about? You said, I don't think things can turn out. I've accepted it. It's a sadness. No, so no, no, like no. No, no it's not. I don't think things can turn out. I don't think anything you plan ever turns out the way you, you plan it. That's all. Is yeah. this your philosophy? No. No, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> do you think that it's uh, fun to put on an audience? I don't know, I've never done it. <laughs> I wrote a song called uh, Baby You've Been On My Mind. Uh, yeah. You didn't record it, right? No. Uh, did you sing it at the concert? Have you? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. No. Are, are the concerts fun still? Yeah. Concerts are much more fun than they used to be. Do you consider them more important uh, than your albums, for instance? No. Uh, it's just a kick to do it now. The albums are the most important. Because they reach more people? No, because uh, it's all concise, very concise. And... Uh, and it's easy to hear the words and everything. There's no chance of the sound uh, interfering. Whereas in the concerts, we've played some concerts where uh, sometimes this, they have a very bad, uh, very bad halls, you know, and microphone systems. So it's not that easy for somebody to come and just listen to a band as if they were listening to one person, you know. Will you make all those lyrics of songs available in a book sometime? Oh, they all are, yeah. 
They all are. You say you uh, no longer sing your older songs. Do you consider them less valid than the ones you're putting out now? No, I just consider them uh, something else in themselves, you know? Uh, for, you know, for in another time, another dimension. It would be kind of dishonest for me to sing them now because I wouldn't really feel like singing them. What? <coughs> What is the strangest thing that ever happened to you? <laughs> You're gonna get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> but what is the weirdest thing? Why did you hear as a friend? <laughs> I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> what areas in music that you haven't gotten into? do you hope to get into? Uh, writing a, a symphony uh, with different melodies and different words, different, different ideas all being the same, which just roll on top of each other and underneath each other. Mr. Dillon, when will you know that it's time to get out of the music field and into another field? When I get very dragged. When, when you stop uh, making money? No, when my teeth, uh, when my teeth get better. You know, or, God, just when something makes a drastic, uh, when I start to itch, you know? When something just goes to a terrifying turn. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's got nothing to do with anything. <laughs> and it's time to leave. <laughs> you say you're going to write symphonies. Yes. Is this in terms of we think of symphonies? I'm not sure. Uh, well, uh, songs which are all written, you know, as a part of a symphony, different different melodies, different uh, changes, with words uh, or without them, you know. But it, the end result being uh, a total. Uh, I mean, they say that my songs are long now, you know. Well, you know, sometimes it's just going to bound to come up with one. It's going to be, you know, one whole album consisting of one song. I don't know who's going to buy it. <laughs> that might be the time to leave. <laughs> What's the know. longest song you recorded? Uh, I don't know. I don't really check those things. They just turn out long. I guess I've recorded one about 11, 12 minutes long. Hollis Brown is pretty long on my second record. And uh, With God on Your Side was kind of long. But... <laughs> But none of them are, uh, I don't think there was as much in, into anything as uh, Desolation Row was, and that was long, too. Songs shouldn't seem long, you know, it just so happens that it looks that way on paper. That's all. The length of it doesn't really have anything to do with it. Doesn't this give you a problem when issuing writers? No, they're just, they're just ready to do anything that I put down now, so they don't really care. <laughs> But what happens if they have to cut a song in half, like uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues? They the same didn't one? have to cut that in half. So, but they didn't have to, but they did. No, they didn't. No. Are you the talking same. about like a Rolling Stone? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, they cut it in half for the disc jockeys. Oh, well, you see, that song, it didn't matter for the disc jockeys if they had it cut in half. Because uh, the other side was just a continuation on the other side, and if anybody was interested, they could just turn it over and listen to what really happens, you know. Uh, but we just made a song the other day, which came out ten minutes long. And I, I thought of re releasing it as a single, but there was just th they would have easily released it and cut it up, but uh, it wouldn't have worked that way. So we didn't. We're not going to uh, turn it out as a single. It's called Freeze Out. You'll hear it on the next album. Of, uh, of all the people who, comp who uh, record your compositions, who do you feel does most justice to what you're trying to say? I think Manfred 
Man. Manfred Mann. <coughs> uh, they've done they've done the songs. They've done about three or four, and each one of them has uh, been right in context of what the song was all about. Oh, it's about, uh, just about all kinds of different things. Rats, balloons. They're about the only thing that come to my mind right now. Is that the same book as McMillan? Yes, yes. No, I don't really do too many of them. I, I wouldn't do it if I was oppressed or depressed or there's nothing, nothing wrong here. Seems kind of silly I'm up here, that's all, but... How would you define, how would you define folk music? How would I define folk music? How would you music? define folk music? As a constitutional replay of mass production. Do you call your songs prote um, folk songs? No, no. <coughs> Are protest songs folk songs? I guess if they're a constitutional replay of mass production. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer songs with a subtle or obvious message? With a what? A subtle or obvious message. Uh, I don't really prefer those kind of songs at all. A message, you mean like, what song with a message? Well, like Eve of Destruction and things like that. Do I prefer that to what? I don't know, but your songs are supposed to have a subtle <coughs> message. A subtle message? <laughs> well, they're supposed to. <laughs> Where'd you hear that? <laughs> In a movie magazine. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> well, we don't we don't discuss those things here. Are your songs uh, ever about real people, like you know, occasional poetry? Or... Sure, they are. They're all about real people. Particular one? <coughs> Particular people? Sure. I'm sure you've seen all the people in my songs <coughs> at one time or another. Who's Mr. Jones? <laughs> Mr. Jones, I'm not going to tell you his first name. <laughs> I get sued. <laughs> what does he do for a living? He's a pin boy. <laughs> <laughs> he also wears suspenders. <laughs> Can you explain your uh, attraction <coughs> as a performer and a writer? Attraction to what? <laughs> your attraction. <laughs> your popularity, your mass popularity. No, no. I really have no idea. That's the truth. I always tell the truth. That is the truth. What are your own <laughs> personal hopes for the future, and uh, what do you hope to change in the world? Oh, my hopes for the future. I, to be honest, you know, I don't have any hopes for the future, and I uh, just hope to have enough boots to be able to change them. That's all, really. It doesn't boil down to anything more than that. If, there, if it did, I would certainly tell you. What do you think of a question and answer session of, uh, of this type, with you as the principal well, subject? Well, I think, I think we all have, we all have different, uh, I think I dropped an ash on myself somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. well. You'll see in a minute here. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say anything about it, though. Uh, I, uh, what was the question? <laughs> what are you thinking about right now? Thinking about this ash. <laughs> <coughs> right before that. Huh? This ash is creeping up on me somewhere. I've lost, lost touch with myself, so I can't tell where exactly it is. <laughs> 
Was that an inadvertent the evading of the question? No, I didn't. What, I didn't. You, what you uh, feel about meetings of this kind, uh, question and answer sessions? Oh no, no. I, I just know in my own mind that you we all have uh, a different idea of all the words we're using. Uh, you know, so I don't really have too much. Uh, really can't take it too seriously because we're reading. Like if I say the word house, like we're both going to see a different house. If I just say the word, right? So we're using all these other words, like mass production and movie magazine. We all have a different idea of these words too. So I don't really know what we're saying here. What is what you bother right now? No, it's not pointless. If you know, if, if you want to do it, you know, and you're there, you know, it's not pointless. I mean, no, it doesn't hurt me any. You just said it. Is there anything in addition to your songs that you want to say to people? Good luck. Good luck. You don't say that in your song, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. Every song tails off with good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you make it. <laughs> um, what, what, why, uh, I couldn't hit the, the, most of what you Who said. are you? <laughs> <laughs> Get the camera on this, uh, this person over here. <laughs> what do you bother to write the poetry for if we all get different uh, images? And we don't know what you're talking about. Oh, because about I've anyway. got nothing else to do, man. <laughs> huh? A rhyme for orange. I didn't hear that. A rhyme for orange. A rhyme for orange? <laughs> Just a, a rhyme for orange? Um, is it true that you were censored from singing on the Ed Sullivan show because they wouldn't let I'll you say what you wanted minute, to? Man. What? Did they censor you from singing what you wanted to on the Ed Sullivan show? Yes. It was a while, long time ago. <laughs> what did you want to sing? I don't know. It was some song which I, I wanted to sing, and, and they said I could sing. It, it's more to it than just censorship there. They actually said I could sing the song, but uh, when we re went through the rehearsal of it, he came, guy came back afterwards and says that I, I said I have to change it. And he, and he said, can't you sing some folk song like, uh, like the Clancy Brothers do? <laughs> and, and I didn't know any of their songs, and so I couldn't be on the program. That's what it came down to. Have you found that the texts of the interviews with you which have been published are accurate to the actual conversations? No. No, that's, that's another reason for the... I don't really give press interviews or anything because, you know, I mean, even if, if you do something, there are a lot of people here so they know what's going on, but like if you just do it with one guy or a few guys, they just take it all out of context, you know? They just take it, uh, split it up in the middle or just take what they want to use and uh, they, they even, you, they ask you a question and you answer it and then it comes out in print that they just substitute another question for your answer. That makes you just sound like the way you, you it's not really truthful, you know, to do that kind of thing, so I just don't do it. That's just a press problem there. You which think the entire text of your news conference today should be printed in the paper? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. Not, nothing like that, but this is just for the interviews, you know, what, when they do want interviews in places like Omaha or in Cincinnati, man, you know. I don't, uh, I don't do it, and then they write bad things. Well, isn't this partly because uh, you're often inaudible, like for... Most of this dialogue or monologue, you have been inaudible. And now when you're touched personally by uh, the misquotation, your voice rises and oh, we yeah. can hear you. Uh, yeah, well, I just realized that maybe the people in the back there can't yeah. hear me. That's all. I, I was going to ask you whether you're, you know, in your songs you sing out. Yes, pretty, I do. And whether in your and conversation... Well, the songs are what I do. You, you see, the, the songs, though... Are, is what I do, yeah. is, is write the songs and sing them uh, and perform them. That, that's what I do. Uh, the performing part of it could end, but like uh, I'm going to be writing these songs and singing them <coughs> and records for, and you know, I see no end right now. Uh, that, that's what I do. Uh, anything else is interferes with it. I mean, anything else trying to get on top of it, making something out of it, which it isn't, it just brings me down. And, and uh, it's not, it's not, it, it just uh, makes it seem all very cheap. Well, it made me feel like you were almost doing a kind of penance of silence here. No, no. For the first no, I'm not part. one of those no. kind of people at all. You don't all. need silence. No, no silence. It's always silent where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Dylan, when you're on a concert tour, how many people <laughs> travel in your party? Do you travel alone or do you have a... We travel with about 12 people now. Uh, do the number of people seem to go with the amount of money you're making? Uh, uh, I didn't hear that. Do the number of people seem to increase as you make more money? This oh, thing. yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Is that known as Dylan? Why do you need so many people when you travel? On <laughs> well, we have the band. We have we have uh, five in the group, and we need uh, other things. We have to. It's a lot of electronic equipment now, a lot of different things which have to be taken care of. So we need a lot of people. We have uh, three road managers, and uh, things like that. We don't make any big public presentations though. Like we never come into town in, in the limousines or anything like that. We just. Uh, go from place to place, you know, and do the shows, that's all. You fly in your own plane? Do you have a private yes. plane? Yes, yes. What? Do you have to get in a certain type of mood to write your music? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. A certain type of mood, if you want to call do it you, that. Do you, find, do you find that you're perhaps more creative at a certain time of the day? Yes, day? yes, I feel that way. Like a night writer? I wouldn't say night has anything to do with it. <coughs> Have you ever sung with the Beatles? No. no. Well, we I think we may have messed around in London, but I don't, no, I don't think anything's serious. Were you ever to play a dance? Huh? Were you ever to play with people with dance? No. It's not that kind of music. It is. Well, what can I say? <laughs> you must know more about the music then than I do. <laughs> How long have you been playing it? <laughs> uh, do you find that when you're writing, do you, uh, yes, yes. Do you find that when you're writing that you sort of free associate often? You just like no, it's all very clear and simple to me. These songs aren't complicated to me at all. I know what they all are all about. There's nothing hard to figure out for me. I, I wouldn't write anything that I can't really see. I, I, don't, I didn't mean it that way. I meant that uh, when you're creating a song, are you doing it more or less at a, sort of a subliminal level, level where you're letting your mind just flow? No, my mind is you're, like that. You're very right conscious of uh, each step, each word. No. No, that's the difference in the songs I'm writing, I write now in the past year or so. The last year and a half, maybe two, I don't know, but the songs before, <coughs> up till uh, one of those records, I don't know, I wrote the fourth record in Greece. I was thinking so there was that a change point, uh, there. But uh, the records before that, I used to know what I, I wanted to say before I used to write the song, you see. All the stuff which I had written before, which wasn't song, which is on a piece of you know, toilet paper when it comes out like that. That's the kind of stuff I never would sing because there, people would, uh, you know, I know people just would not be ready for it. But I just went through that other thing of writing songs, so, and uh, I couldn't write like it anymore. It was just too easy, and it wasn't really right. Uh, I would start out, I would know what I wanted to say before I wrote the song, and I would say it, you know. And it never really would come out exactly what, the, way, the way I thought it would, but it came out, you know, it touched it, you know. But now, I just write a song, you know, like I know that it's just going to be all right, you know. And, and I don't really know exactly what it's all about, but I do know the, uh, the minute and the, and the layers of uh, what it's all about. What do you think about your song, uh, It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding? That is to be my favorite one. <laughs> God bless you, son. <laughs> no, he I haven't heard it for a long time. I couldn't even sing it for you, probably. How long does it take you to write? It's usually not too long time, really. I might write all night and get one song out of a lot of different things I write. How many have I written? Uh, I guess, well, there's one publisher that's got about 100. I've written about 50 others, I guess. I got about 150 songs I've written. Have they all been published? The, well, no, just n no. Some of the scraps haven't been published. But I find I can't really sing that anyway because uh, I, I forget it, you know. So the songs I don't publish, I usually do forget. Are you 
going to eventually take these scraps, as you call them, and make no, them into No, I forgot the scraps. I ought to start over all the time. I, I can't really keep notes or anything like that. But you can't go back to any earlier things no, and make no. them, use them in your... No, no, that wouldn't be right either. <coughs> Yeah, if it happens, you know, that was a very, uh, was, are you the same cat that was sitting over there? <laughs> <laughs> on, on your songs, do you get any help from uh, the rest of your, you know, your entourage? What? Do you get any help from the, the group that you play with, or do you write your songs? Uh, Robbie, and lead guitar player, sometimes we play the guitars together, something might come up. But I know it's going to be right. Uh, we're just sitting around playing so I can write up some words. I don't get any ideas, though, to any kind of, uh, any kind of ideas of what I want to, you know, what's really going to happen here. Why do you think so popular? I don't know. I'm not a reporter. I'm not a newsman or anything. I'm not even a philosopher. I have no idea. I would think other people would know, but I don't think I know. You know, when you get too many people talking about the same thing, it tends to clutter up things, so I just... Everybody asks me that, so I realize they must be talking about it. So I, I, don't, I would rather stay out of it and make it easy for them. And when they get the answer, I hope they tell me. <laughs> Has there been any more booing when you played electric? electric oh, there's guitar? booing. You can't tell where the booing's going to come up. Can't tell at all. <laughs> it comes up, it comes up in the weirdest, strangest places. And uh, when it comes up, it's uh, quite a thing in itself. Uh, um, where is Desolation Row? I figure there's a little boo in all of this. What? Uh, where is Desolation Row? I didn't hear you. Where is Desolation Row? Where? Yeah. Oh, that's someplace in Mexico. It's uh, across the border. <laughs> it's it's noted for its Coke factory. <laughs> Coca-Cola machines are, sells sell a lot of Coca-Cola down there. Where's Highway 61? Highway 61 is it, it exists. That's out in the middle of the country. Runs down to the south, goes up north. Mr. Dillon, you seem very reluctant to talk about the fact that you're a popular entertainer and you're a most popular uh, entertainer. Well, what do you want me to say? Well, I don't understand why you uh, well, what do you want me to say? To, uh, you want me to say uh, who, who, what do you want me to say about it? Well, you seem to, almost embarrassed to admit that you're to talk about Well, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, popular. you know, uh, what, what do you want exactly me to say? You want me to jump up and say hallelujah and crash the cameras and do something weird? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Tell me. I'll, I'll go along with you. If I can't go along with you, I'll find somebody to go along with you. No, but I, I find it, it you really have no idea as to why you or no thoughts on why you're popular. That's the, what interests me. On. I just have no, haven't really struggled for that. I, I don't... Uh, it happened, you know? It happened like anything else happens. It's just a happening. You don't figure out happenings. You dig happenings. So I'm not going to talk Bob, about it. Do you it. feel that part of the popularity is because of an identification uh, of your audience with you or with what you're saying or what you've been writing about? I have no idea. I don't really come too much in contact. Does it make life more difficult? No, it certainly doesn't. Were you surprised the first time the blues came? Yeah, they were, that was at Newport. Well, I went, I did this very crazy thing. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I didn't really know what was going to happen, but uh, they certainly booed, I'll tell you that. You could hear it all over the place. I don't know who they were, though, and I'm certainly they made, they, whoever it was, did it, you know, loud, twice as loud as they normally would. They kind of quieted down some at Forest Hills, although they, they did it there, too. They've done it just about all over, except in Texas. And uh, they didn't boo us in Texas or in, uh, in uh, Atlanta or in Boston and in, or in Ohio. They've done it just about, or in Minneapolis they didn't do it there, but they've done it a lot of other places. 
I mean, they must be pretty rich to be able to go someplace and boo. <laughs> I, mean, uh, Other I, I couldn't afford it if I was in their shoes. Other than the booing, if the audience has changed, I mean, do you get screaming, do you get people rushing to the stage? No, the oh, sometimes sing? you get people rushing to the stage, but you just, you know, turn them off very fast. Kick them in the head or something like that. <laughs> they get the picture. Going back to uh, what you said a minute ago about not really being concerned and not really knowing uh, why you uh, are in the midst of this popularity, that's in direct opposition to uh, what most uh, people who reach this level of popularity say. And I well, am popular you see, a lot of people, a lot of so people start out and they try to try to be. Stars, I would imagine, like, however they have to be stars. I mean, I know a lot of those people, you know? And they start out and they go into show business for many, many reasons to be uh, seen, you know? Uh, I started out, you know, like, I, this was had nothing to do with it when I started. I started from New York City, you know? And uh, there just wasn't any of that around. It just happened, you know, so... Uh, don't, don't misunderstand me. I, I agree with your right not to have to care. My, my, my point is that uh, it would be somehow uh, somewhat disappointing to the many people who think that you feel towards them the way they feel towards you. And that's the reason for your popularity. That's what oh, they think. Well, I don't want to disappoint anybody. I mean, tell me what I should say. Here. Good. I'm with you. Huh? Fine. You know, I'll certainly go along with anything. But it's, uh, I really don't have much of an idea. You have a poster there, does that denote Yes, this poster somebody gave to me. It looked I looked good. <laughs> Jefferson Airplane, John Handy, Quintet, and Sam Thomas, and Mystery Trend, and the Great Society are all playing Friday at Fillmore Auditorium Friday, December 10th, and I would like to go if I could. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm, I won't be here, I don't think, but uh, if I was here, I, should, I certainly would be there. Do you tour in the South? Yeah. What's more important to you, uh, the the way that your music and words sound, or the content, the message of the work? The the whole thing while it's happening, the the whole total sound of the words, uh, what's really going down is is. Uh, it, it, it either is, it either happens or it doesn't happen, you know. That's what I feel is just just the thing which is happening there at that time. That's that, that's the, that's what what what's, ha what's what we do, you know. That is the most important thing. There really isn't anything else. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Well, you mean it, it, it might happen one time and might not happen oh, the yeah, next time with the same song. Oh yeah, you know. But uh, well, we always take good cuts for the record. The records are always made on good cuts, and in person, it just most of the time it does come across. Most of the time, we do feel like you know playing. Uh, that's important to me. The aftermath, or whatever happens before and after, is not really important to me. Just the time on the, st on the stage and the, and the time <coughs> that we're singing the songs and performing them. Or not really performing them, even just letting them be there. Bob, we promised to spring you at a certain yeah, time, which is now it's now 2 o'clock. Okay. That's Thank you very much. All right. I'd like to, incidentally, to suggest that Mary Ann Pollard explain the... Uh,